Martin of Design. Beautiful, beautiful sight. Martin Omar Design, that beautiful city is giving God glory. Thank him all he's done on today. He's God good today. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, he is. God is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Romans chapter 16, just one verse. Verse number 20. Romans 16, and verse number 20. One verse. Real simple. And God of What's that word? The God of who? The God of peace. We've been talking about peace all along. And the God of what? Peace. Peace. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Grace, our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. I want to talk today on the subject, put Satan under your feet. Put Satan under your feet. Lord bless us today. Let us preach your word according to the instruction of the Holy Ghost. Let us, O oh God, not steer away from or adhere away from what you have told us to say. Let us preach with power, authority, and anointing. That, O oh God, that your word might go fresh and clear and simplistic. That it will not return void. But that it accomplish that which you have for it to be accomplished. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Put Satan under your feet. Yes, this world that we live in today is full of turbulence, tumultuous chaos, and has established an unstable peace of mind in men and women caused by lots of violence, confusion, loud and excited and emotional disorders of all kinds. We are living in a society where nowadays seem to favor chaos over a peaceful coexistence among the humanity which numbers this global society. We need only look at the nightly news or the internet blogosphere or listen to the radio and news alerts uh, to be able to understand and to see how the world is in a certain chaotic progression towards certain mass destruction. Peaceful assemblies in the U.S. and abroad are becoming violent. And sometimes fatal clashes between the governmental authorities, the police, and the unarmed and sometimes armed protesters. What seem to be harmless and peaceful assemblies of law abiding citizens and peaceful demonstrations of rights to free speech and of the right of peaceful assemblies are turning into medical media spectacles to be seen and played back continuously on the major world news networks in a continuous loop cycle. You see, being able to go to sleep at night and have a peaceful rest is replaced by tossing and turning a sleepless, worrisome state of mind. We worry about the bills that are too. Worry about the children that don't act right in here. Worry about a husband and a wife who seem to have their attention turned on other directions than towards us. Chaos. We're racial. Turbulence. All of these problems in relationships, kinships, and church fellowships are all a ploy of Satan to get us focused off of God and off of his goodness. And they keep us with our mind on negativity, to keep us focused on unproductive things that will do us no good in this life. You see, Satan's job is threefold. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in John 10, 10, the thief coming not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I have come that they, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You see, Satan is a thief. Well, 
that come into the sheepfold to destroy the sheep of God's pasture. But Jesus Christ is the good shepherd that giveth his life for the sheep, that the sheep might not, might not only have eternal life in heaven someday, but have an abundantly spiritual existence in him in this life. See, Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all, we are of all men most miserable. You see, church, we have to have hope in Christ in this life and also in the life that is to come. You see, well, Brother Preacher, how can we achieve this long-lasting peace of Jesus Christ? Well, I give you one solution. And that is to learn how to put Satan under your feet. Can I give you that solution one more time? Put the devil under your foot. Right. Up, under, up, under, up under here. Right. Put him on the bottom of your foot. Right. And start letting him lead you and guide you. And keep telling you what you can and can't do. Right. Huh? Right. See, Satan, though he had been relegated, and he had been given a position lower than he had before. Because Satan has been put under the feet of the born again Christian who believes in Christ. See, when Jesus Christ hung on Calvary's cross, the Bible declares in Colossians 2 13 to 15, he said, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have been quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. He said, Flying out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailed it to his cross. Then he says, and having swore principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. You see, church, he nailed all our sins to the cross of Calvary. He brought out the head by the ordinances that were against us and contrary towards us. Thus then, Christ's death and resurrection from the grave spoiled, embarrassed, and triumphed over the devil. Triumphed over his angels and all evil principalities and powers. All the principalities and powers in the universe are under the feet of Jesus. Did y'all know that? Because Jesus is truly Lord and truly God. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And the devil's power has been taken from him. Because Jesus now is in charge of the whole universe. You gotta get away with this. Jesus is the one we gotta put our hope in and stop letting Satan tell us what we can and cannot do. Oh, you ain't got this and you ain't got that. But I found out long as I got Jesus, that's enough. Long as I got God on my side, I can make it. Because in this life, things are always gonna happen. In this life, problems will come and go. But I found out that the Lord will never leave me. The Lord will never forsake me. He'll take care of me always. Because he's the God of his word. See, church, whether you understand, acknowledge, or even realize, Satan is already under your feet. You say, Freeman, how can I say that? I can say that because Jesus put him there. Jesus put Satan under my feet. Huh? We let Satan have authority over us by not standing up in the authority of Jesus. Are you listening today? We let the devil override what God has already done. Because God has already knocked out the teeth of the devil. But you continue to say, oh, I'm so weak and I'm so weary. But you cease to understand that the power lies in you. 1 John 1, 4 states, ye are of God unto you. And that, and that will overcome them. He said, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes. See, the greater one is inside of us yes. in the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is more powerful than Satan. Yes. And Satan has to bow down to the words of Jesus. Yes. Huh? Yes. We've got to understand that we have more power than we even realize. And we oftentimes uh, don't use the power because we don't even recognize that the power is working constantly on the inside of us. Huh? 
You see, we have overcome false spirits. We have overcome false prophets. We have overcome false prognosticators. See, Satan is under your feet. You need to put him there and keep him right there. Huh? Because there's a greater force in us. There is a God in us. He is God the Holy Spirit. He is God the Holy Ghost. The third person of the Holy Trinity. Jesus said in John 14, 15 through 18, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Watch this. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth them not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Satan is under your feet. Because Jesus dwells in us through the power and presence of the Holy Ghost. He is the spirit of truth. Spirit of truth telling us, showing us, and trying to lead us in the right direction if we're letting do it. See, the Holy Ghost abides in the believer forever. The Holy Ghost does not come and go. The Holy Ghost abides in us forever. And that's why we can read the Spirit. We can preach the Holy Spirit. But we never lose His presence and power because when we make a mistake, God is still with us. And he'll buy with us and he'll help us to get up and get ourselves together. Stop, stop quitting and stop throwing in the towel and stop saying I give up every time something don't go your way. But that's the time to call on Jesus and ask the Lord to have his way in our heart. And ask him to clean us up and turn us around and place our feet on solid ground. God will do it. Isn't that right? Because he said in Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I commanded you, look at this. And he said, and lo, I am with you always. That's what Jesus said. He said, not only always, but even to the end of the world. Do y'all understand what Jesus was saying? Jesus said, I ain't going to never leave you. Y'all leave me, but I ain't leaving you. Huh? He said, I'm the one that keep you when you can't keep yourself. More than turn the other cheek. All about the Lord to give you power to do it. You think of yourself, you're gonna knock somebody out because that's a nature of your spirit. Huh? A nature to defend ourselves. Huh? To not let nobody walk over top of you. Don't take my kindness for weakness. Well, Jesus said, you gotta learn how to turn that cheek. And understand when you do that, I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> Sometimes we don't let God do nothing. We're so busy trying to do God's work. Amen. Keeping God from blessing us. God can bless us if we just get out of the way and let him do his thing. Amen. God wants to bless us. God wants to sustain us. He wants to keep us. But we always get in his way. Lord, I can't do this. Lord, I can't do that. Lord, I'm not old enough. Lord, I can't make it. Lord, I ain't got this. Lord, I ain't got that. And all the time he said, I'm with you always. He said, you got me, whatever do you need? <laughs> he said, you got me, I can provide the rest. But are you going to turn to, to Jesus and let him have his way? Jesus said, when he saved me, when the Holy Spirit dwells you, that he is with you always. Listen to me, in good times, in bad times, ups and downs, when you sin and when you confess your sin, the Holy Spirit dwells in the believer forever. Satan wants you to think God forgot about you. Satan wants you to think that God left you out there by yourself. Yeah, you look at that. You went out there for God and God left you out there. Look at you. Tony Bueller down. Uh, look at y'all, man. He, he ain't doing nothing. Look at you. Look at you. But if it hadn't been for God on our side, we wouldn't be where we are today. Huh? Because what God promises, God can deliver. If he promised to keep you, he'll keep you. But you got to keep 
keep your hand in the hand of the Lord. Say it wants you to quit. He wants you to think that God forgot about you. Because you slip and fall. And you, you, you ain't gonna make it. But the Holy Ghost said, get back up. Try again. Don't stay on the ground. Get up and repent of your sins. Turn from your wicked ways. Then when you hear from heaven, God forgive our sins, heal the land. Romans 16, 20 says, and the God of peace shall prove Satan under your feet shortly. Huh? Jesus Christ himself is the God of peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the heart fixer. He is the mind regulator. The God of peace. Jesus Christ shall prove Satan under your feet shortly. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. I wish I had a witness to him. We've got to resist the wiles of the devil and put on the whole arm of God. And we can withstand in this battle. Born in the battle with no arm on him. Wonder why you're getting shot every time you look. Forgot to pick up your helmet. Forgot to pick up your sword. Forgot to pick up your word. Forgot to get your feet shot. Forgot to get on everything. He said, put on the armor and keep it on. Don't put it on and take it off every time you feel like it. So I want to go to this party tonight. Nice. I got to put this arm off today. I got a party. A party in the house. I get an on Sunday morning. I can think of, I can think of make this party tonight. <laughs> you can't keep putting it on and take it off. Put it on and keep it on. Amen. God will send you only those parties. <laughs> Greater than the party when you were drinking and getting high. He'll give you a blessing. A high that you never know. A high in the Holy Ghost. Huh? First John 3 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sent it from the beginning. He said, for the purpose of the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You see, the devil is at the root of all sin. The devil is trying to destroy the Christian. He's trying to destroy the church. He's trying to cut us off from fellowship with God. But Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth and draw all men unto me. Huh? He said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. See, Jesus' purpose for being manifested or revealed to the world is that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to put Satan and all his authority and demons and all his evil principalities under his feet. Huh? God told the serpent in the garden of Eden because he tricked Eve into eating of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. Given to Adam be also. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. And above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall I go, and dust shall I eat all the days of thy life. He said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God did it. He put hatred or enmity between Satan's seed and Eve's seed. Through easy, Jesus Christ will come down through Adam's lineage. See, Satan is under our feet. Because Satan is under the feet of Jesus Christ. How do you get there? Because Jesus went to Calvary's cross. He hung up and died for you and for me. Jesus carried all our sins to the place called Calvary. Jesus hung there. Prayed. And then nailed to the cross all the sins that we had done. He triumphed over Satan and over principalities and powers of the universe. Then he went to the grave, laid there, but early on the third day, got up with all power in his hands. Jesus spoiled, triumphed over, and exposed the devil for the weak, inferior, fallen angel that he. He exposed the devil, took the power from the devil to control God's people any longer. See, death, hell, and the grave must give up his president when Jesus Christ come back and sit on his throne in Jerusalem. Church, I want you to put Satan on your feet. 
Because that's where it belongs. I want to know if God been good to you today. Is there anybody can say, I know the Lord been good to me? Is there anybody can say, I know the Lord but the Lord woke me up early this morning? Is there anybody that can say that God saved my soul and made me whole and because of Jesus, I shall live again? Is there anybody that knows that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always? And that with God on your side, you're going to leave me. I don't care what folk may say. I don't care what folk may do. But if I got Jesus, I'm going to make it. If I got Jesus on the inside, working on the outside, I want to know can you see a change in my life? See, when God works on the inside, something got to come out of the outside. And the fruit of the Spirit start flowing out of it. That love, peace, and joy, and long suffering, all of it comes out. We can say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't nobody but the Lord. All I can say to you today, church, is that God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. Yes, he is. He's a mighty good God. Mighty He's a mighty good God. Yes, he is. All I'm going to tell you today, please put Satan on your feet yes. and stop letting him tell you what you can and can't do. Amen. Stop letting him control you. Stop letting him tell you that you're not this, you're not that. Because in God's sight, we all are somebody. With the help of God, we all gonna make it. Yes, so we're gonna keep on, keep on. trusting in the Lord. Is God all right today? Yes. Isn't you all right today? Yes. Well, I don't care if you don't pray. I got some rocks over there. Let the crowd go. You ain't got to say a word, but be quiet. Get some rocks in the corner. Let the crowd for God and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because you blessed me. Ain't nobody but you. Tell us in the darkest hour of life. Didn't let the devil pull us down with you. Cap us. Cause you God. <laughs> We're going to be blessed. One day we can hear your voice say, well done. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Yes. Good and faithful. A few things. I'll make you rule over me. One man said, I'll treat a lifetime with just one day. One day. Paradise. Just give me one day to see Jesus' face. You can have all of this. This means nothing compared to standing before Jesus and saying, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me from the hell fire. Thank you for giving me a chance. We would come in your prayers and spend eternity in paradise. Praise the Lord. Put the devil under your feet. And everything going to be all right. Praise the Lord. Let us stand. Doors of the church are now open. There are one who would come today. He would like to the Lord. He's crying and calling right now for those who come. Maybe there's one who's already saved. Won't come and join the church. You come out And if a baptism of Christian experience, you can come. Praise the Lord.